Early on the 20th of October, Nintendo finally revealed the NX, officially called the Nintendo Switch. In the three minute video, a lot of info was shown, but seeing how close to some of the patents the console is, it's possible to deduce many of the Switch's features and abilities. So we are going over everything currently known and all the information hidden in the trailer and on the internet for Nintendo's next console, Switch. The largest gimmick of the Switch is the long-rumored ability to take your console games on the go. Officially dubbed the Switch Dock, a user plugs the handheld unit into and plays the games on a TV. Now remember, and this is important, in the original patents that this feature was found in, it was found alongside a separate feature where the docking station would have its own set of processing units. And when plugged in, the handheld would share processors between the two systems. Essentially, the handheld being able to run games at a certain resolution, which has been rumored to be 720p, and while plugged into the dock, which would contain supplemental components, it would allow games to run at higher frame rates or higher resolutions. Now, while this was not fully confirmed, note how large the dock itself is, and it has ports on it, so this is probably more than just an HDMI pass-through. The patent goes into detail on how games would be programmed to run differently based on different system configurations. And remember, this is the only publicly known past patent that Nintendo owns. The patent that involves sharing resources between two separate independent systems to be able to run games at different configurations is a patent that Nintendo holds. Now, in regards to the controller, the patents were half right. Gone are the rotary shoulder buttons, image sensors, and Sharp's freeform displays. But here are removable controller modules that slide onto the sides of the main handheld unit. Officially dubbed as Joy-Cons, these are more complex than originally believed. Once rumored to be barebone plastic pieces without any electronics within are now fully working wireless controllers on their own. Lastly, the D-pad is just a group of buttons, and there were rumors going around that there was going to be a segmented D-pad, and this is the case. Why? Because the Joy-Con controllers can be used independently of one another to allow multiplayer games to be played on the handheld device itself. Now, it appears that inside the Joy-Cons on the side that latches onto the handheld unit are also shoulder buttons. As seen within the trailer, two people are playing Mario Kart something. We'll get to that, but they're also drifting. However, the only buttons we see is an analog stick and four face buttons. There are shoulder buttons on the inside of the Joy-Cons. Now, a popular rumor that was circulating around last year was that Nintendo was porting popular Wii U games to the new system to expand its launch library and allow Wii U users to upgrade to the new system easily. Shown in this trailer was Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon. However, with a few odd details. First, in Mario Kart, King Boo is seen as a driver, something not seen in retail, along with the player being able to have two items at once. Also, the track itself appears to be Yoshi's Circuit, but it appears gray instead of blue. Now, this is along with Splatoon showing inklings with custom hairstyles, clothing including both t-shirts and shorts. Now, the official Japanese Splatoon Twitter account has confirmed that the different hairstyles represent different species of inklings, along with the map shown, Underpass, being an updated version of the one found in the Wii U. Now, it's very possible for these games to be enhanced ports with added features, or less likely, sequels to the games. Either way, it would be nice for Nintendo to give these games, or at least a reduced price on these games, for owners of the previous Wii U versions. However, that's complete speculation. Super Smash Bros. was also in these rumors, but was not seen in the trailer, but if they're going to be bringing over Splatoon and Mario Kart, they're probably going to be bringing over Super Smash Bros. as well. And speculation, I think that these are essentially Game of the Year edition versions. Remember Mario Kart 8 got 200cc mode, which was DLC. Imagine like two more DLC packs, new characters, new tracks, and a few new features features for Mario Kart, a few new features, some new maps and new characters and weapons for Splatoon, and then all the DLC that's already available for Smash Brothers already available on your purchase. Also shown is a new Mario game, and there is debate on exactly what kind of game it is, whether that's a Mario 64 style or 3D World style game. By the looks of the level design shown and the camera movement along with the movement of Mario himself, this appears to be a Super Mario Galaxy style game, where you have certain areas that are Mario 64 style levels where you explore a large area and also linear obstacle courses to be able to complete. The end result being to collect a star, just like Mario 64 Super Mario Galaxy. Also within the footage is a recovery heart from Super Mario 64 and although this might just be like the replacement for like the star coins or something along those lines, it is weird to see a item that was in Mario 64 all those years ago finally return. This could mean that we have a Mario 64 health meter. They purposely did not show off the HUD 
blood, and specific types of levels that would be a dead ringer for a specific type of game. Please note that the footage we were shown was specifically chosen to be as ambiguous as possible. It's a new Mario game, but it could be either or. That was done purposefully. It is probably a Mario Galaxy 3, as Shigeru Miyamoto has stated that is something he would work on in the future. Also realize that within all first party games shown, they are reusing a lot of the assets seen within Wii U games. This makes sense. Nintendo is trying to pad out the Switch library as much as possible and reusing the already known 3D assets for Splatoon, Mario, and Mario Kart speeds up the process of development and allows for more content to be made in terms of maps and game modes. Also keep in mind, even with the late announcement, Nintendo has stuck with the March release date, so we will be hearing about more information very soon. And the large facet of the Switch is the newly announced partnership with a lot of third-party publishers, with Bethesda and From Software being some who interest me. Skyrim had a large part of the trailer, and NBA 2K also had a large section, and both selling the idea of AAA games that you can play on the Xbox and PlayStation on the go. So be excited, because this is coming soon, and let's just hope it's affordable, because if it's under $300, Nintendo may have just won. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Tyler McVicker. This is Nintendo News Network. Have a good day. Adios.